Welcome to the Stories Are Soul Food podcast, presented by Cannonball Books and Great Homeschool Conventions. So welcome to SASF, Stories Are Soul Food. I'm Andy Wilson. That's Brian Cole over there. You can't see him because we don't do video. Here I am, though. And we don't do video because I still have not signed off on that. That's because I want to be able to wear sweatpants like I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> but today we are welcoming Ryan Smith into the conversation. Welcome, Ryan. Hello. Ryan Happy Smith is here. joining us from Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, Ryan is, at this point, I think you could, I can actually say an old friend. I don't remember how long ago we met, but it's been at least a decade. It has been more than a decade, yes, in fact. More than a decade. And... Ryan and I met, our first conversation was about 100 cupboards more than a decade ago. And it was pretty, pretty early on that I discovered how much we had in common. And that had to do with a deep love of Chesterton, Tolkien, Lewis, you know, all those, those biggies that everybody knows about, but everybody knows about, and they all know they should love those writers, but very few actually do. I mean, plenty of people pay lip service. But very few people will actually go read the Ballad of the White Horse or, or, or uh, all the books. You know, they just know big picture stuff. But then there's other things like John Buchan. And I actually saw you give him a shout out today in your, in your Instagram announcement about your new book release, which is what we're talking about today. And I was like, yes, <laughs> John Green Buchan. Mantle, one of the best books ever. In a book for the Psalms. Okay, fun. Yeah, so... You know, John Buchan, and then the film, the film stuff. So Ryan is one of those guys who has a love of story, uh, a love of poetry, a love of storytelling in any form, really, but a love of prose, poetry, film, great film. And you've got some past in some classical education, don't you, Ryan? Am I lying? I do. The rumors are true. Rumors are true. You came through. Was it Franklin Classical? Is that the school? That is correct. Yeah. So he's uh, one of those classically educated chappies. And so there, it was kind of weird how much connective tissue there was, which is prob- probably explains why he likes the books he likes and has the tastes he has. So there's plenty to talk about. And we've continued to talk over distance or connect over different things. We have very few disagreements, one of which it's, it's mostly by degrees. He has more. He has more. I don't know, would we say affection or respect for Harry Potter? <laughs> I would say affection. More I would affection. Always say I think it's an equal mix of affection and respect. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not that I don't like and respect Harry Potter, but he would shade it a little darker or a little lighter, whichever one you want to say is more positive. On the scale of positivity, Ryan's a little more positive. And we could have actually a great conversation about that too. And he would, uh, he'd, he'd be able to push me on that a little bit. But we're here today to talk about a book he's releasing on the day of this recording. Uh, It'll be about five days old when this recording goes, which is a book of prayers, which are interpretations or prayers based on some of the Psalms. Yeah. Sheltering mercy, huh? Prayers inspired by the Psalms. Prayers inspired. uh, And so there's, there's ways in which these are poetic interpretations, ways in which these are poetic renderings. Some of them are some of them stay closer to the Psalms directly, you know, more one-to-one, especially the shorter Psalms. And some are more ins- loosely inspired. Uh, there's a little bit of variation, but they, that, obviously there's a pretty tight correlation. You know, they're not hybridizations. It's like you, you can tell when you're in which Psalm and they're pretty close. They stay pretty close. Yeah, I went and checked out, you know, some of the favorites, Psalm 1 and 2 and Psalm 40. It's the first 75, right, Ryan? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's the first 75. We have volume two coming next spring, spring of 23. So that'll be the the back half. But uh, yes, this first uh, first volume is the first 75 Psalms. And it is yeah. a really beautiful little volume. I've got the actual hard copy now. And it is what I hoped it would be, which is lovely. Like it really is a, a lovely little book. And in these days, you have to kind of invest in the artifact of the book, like the artifact itself. Um, so you, you have to be really happy, like given that you are a lover of books yourself, like in the books that sit on your shelf, 
the look of them, the addition of them, the spine, every, everything about them from whether they're French flapped or raglan edged or anything like that. Uh, what a rough cut. Yeah. Um, the decal edge. Decal. Is it de- what is it? Decal edged. Yeah. Yeah. Raglan sleeved is a, is a sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I'm getting mixed up. I'm a real, I'm a real expert. Um, you've got to be excited to have such a cool little volume on your shelf that's, that's yours. Yeah, I really am. I mean, it's, I, you know, there was, uh, for Dan and I, Dan, my co-author. Yeah. Let's just forget about him. Let's pretend like Dan didn't work on this. Shout out to you, <laughs> Dan Wilt. We're forgetting you. Well, well done, Ryan. Way to, way to call out the co-author of this volume. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, there was, there was a bit of, um, you know, we, uh, anxiety about sort of how the book would turn out, you know, because from the beginning, the hope was to uh, create something that would just be aesthetically beautiful. And um, Brazos, the publisher, seemed to, you know, sort of have the same goal in mind. But, it, you know, until we saw the artwork, until we saw the design, we didn't know what to expect. And so uh, once we started to see cover designs come in from Nathan Swan, the, the illustrator, we I think we breathed a, a collective sigh of relief. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, very, yeah, very. I, I, li- I like the gutsy move of this, though, because oh, yeah, as you bold. point out in your intro, you know, the Psalms are in many different translations. Um, uh, was that did you how hard was it or when did you know that you this is what we wanted to do as opposed well, to we just thought, you know, we thought the Psalms needed some help. So, <laughs> you know, even great David uh, nods. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you know, it's so funny because this, I mean, this really emerged, we talked about this in the introduction, but it really emerged out of just like times of just kind of private devotion. I think, I think originally I wrote one just for myself. Um, I didn't even really know what it was. It was just sort of playing with kind of personalizing the text in a way. I don't know, just for me. And I think I shared that with, um, with Dan and he thought it was really interesting. And then we started to write these together. We would sort of send them back and forth. And, um, and then we had 20 or 25 of them written and we compiled those into this little booklet that we gave out to friends and family over Christmas. And I think this was like three years ago. Um, and, uh, one of those, uh, ended up, uh, in the hands of Carolyn Weber, who wrote surprise by Oxford and Carolyn was gracious enough to, to send it on to some publishers, uh, on our behalf. And, and we got some interest. We had a couple offers and ended up going with Brazos, but I was sort of shocked because I thought the concept was really difficult to explain. And I thought people would have a hard time wrapping their heads around, uh, you know, a collection of free verse renderings of the Psalms. Like, what is that? You know, it's not a, is it it's, disrespectful? Not a it's not a paraphrase. Yeah, it's sort is of, this a translation? Uh, is it disrespect? What is it? Like, it's one of those things that it is hard to just get a handle on for the common person of like, are you retranslating it? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, well, no, I would it's, say it's a no. meditation. I, I am not at all qualified for that task. Yeah. <laughs> but what you said is like, in terms of a devotion, a poem, a meditation, like a meditation on a psalm, uh, a yeah. free verse yeah. rendering, a free verse meditation. It is yeah. really interesting to read it. And I, I love doing this kind of thing and i love reading this kind of thing because it does make i remember when i looked at some of the early things i pinged you back with questions about what was i don't remember which psalm it was but i was asking you about you know some decision some i don't remember what some decision was it might have been 40 i don't remember which psalm it was but i either had a question about it a bad decision we made you 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 pinged me on yeah and it was just sort of like you guys are you're you're (laughs) meditating on a psalm and you're contemplating something you're not it's not a reduction. It's not, this is not a reduction sauce. It's not like you're simmering a Psalm down and saying, this is the essence of it. It is actually, this is, this is something inspired by, this is a devotion. This is a meditation. I think it's really, really beneficial. Yeah. Shoots love, off, shoots off of a stump. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is, this is downstream from the Psalms, not a replacement of the Psalms. Read them both. You, you need, you need to be reading the actual Psalms, but reading something like this will help you see the original. Like it is actually, it's a, it's a great way to kind of, to walk through the original. Um, Ryan, I liked how you guys decided to, to, you know, full, full heartedly go in with a new Testament view. Um, oh yeah. You wanted to, right. you know, it's in the Psalms, it's in the back. It's there. We, we know Psalm yeah. 22 is about Jesus, Yeah, but you guys thought, Hey, let's actually make the elephant in the room present. 
if I can refer yeah, to the Christ. Yeah, the Christology. If I can refer to Christ that way. Yeah. No, you, yeah. Can, you may not, Brian. Strike that. Let's strike that. <laughs> yeah, you see, you know, free verse metaphor. <laughs> but it is, it is, uh, the Christology is, is fantastic. And I think they're beautifully done. I think it's a really interesting experiment. And I think it's a very healthy read. I mean, this is a great thing to sit down and, and go through and contemplate. I love. Well, you, you, you know, Nate, you wrote a very kind uh, endorsement for us. The kindest. And, um, I think <laughs> it is the kindest. I think it's the longest. I think you yeah. win uh, on the longest endorsement. Do you know why? Um, Do you know why it was long? Were you expecting him to cut it down? <laughs> I learned. I'm, I'm a professional, Ryan. I'm a professional. <laughs> well, that is obvious. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I've learned. I've learned. I actually, I'd have to go back and look and see if I think I did a good job on my endorsement, but I don't really want to assess that. I don't want to go back and be like, I, oh, I wrote a bad endorsement. Well, you but, know, I was going to say, you, you, you use the phrase, this book is a faithful child of the Psalms and the tradition of other, you know, things that have come before it. And I like that phrase, you know, that it really is, uh, it, 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 you know, it awesome. doesn't in any way yeah. try to sort of replace or supplant, you know, the original text. It's, it, it, it should be read alongside it. And it is, uh, as you said, sort of a this poetic experiment. Um, you know, I think of it a little bit like poetic commentary on the text. Yeah, that's exactly that's a great way to think yeah. of it. And I do when I the uh, the best blurbs in my experience professionally are ones that you can pull multiples from. Where it's like, oh, here's an endorsement. You, the publicist can pull like three or four or five, depending like, on angle, depending and on where it's going out of this. There's these different phrases and tags for different for different places. But sort of like snip and collage as you need. Lots of dot, 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 you know, wherever. Modge podge. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's a, it is a beautiful book, both in content and in like physical structure. Uh, and you are one of the, you're one of the, the pleasant obsessives that I know. It's one of the other, I'm, I might be one of the unpleasant obsessives where you have a real, like a creative drive for perfection and to really keep grinding and keep grinding to make something exactly what you want it to be and to keep pushing but then you do have the ability to like put your pencil down when the clock runs out and walk away you know so i mean that's just the nature of being a filmmaker or writing professionally where you have a deadline you have to eventually walk away you know like you turn in the cut you turn in the the draft how deadline Deadlines yeah. are, are a very helpful thing. Uh, they're yeah. your savior creatively. Otherwise, you'd, you'd still be rearranging these things. Yeah. Did we mention that Ryan, I can't remember if we mentioned that Ryan's also a filmmaker as yes. well as an author. I think we did that before we started rolling. Yeah. Officially. Okay. Yeah. We should mention that again. He's currently actually in post-production on a film I'm, I'm very excited about called Surprised by Oxford. And when I first met Ryan, he actually came to everything the other direction. He's, he's come to storytelling broadly like this, the wishbone, the tension you're under via film. So started on the film side is now on the publishing side and I've started on the publishing side and I'm now got one leg over in the, in the media side. Um, yes. I've, I've reached out with many questions, I think. <laughs> for you. Yeah, exactly. And I was glad I actually had answers to some of them. And this is a horrible, this is a horrible thing to ask an author so we can delete the answer if you don't like your answer afterwards. But <laughs> what is your, like, what's your experience on this? Like when you're walking away from this, and you're moving to the next block of Psalms, like, what are you thinking as you're moving forward? Like, okay, what lessons do you have for the next block? What are you telling yourself in terms of not going to do that again? Or how's your, <laughs> how's your approach changed from this first 75? I would say the, the approach is, is, is essentially the same um, in terms of the process of it. I yeah. mean, the, the way that we've been... The way we've been writing is we, we we divide up the 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 psalms by odds and evens, and we each take a, a crack at kind of the first pass, and then I, I go back through and kind of do the final editorial pass. Um, I think you know if I learned anything, I think it's just um, simplicity wins. You know, sometimes yeah. saying, saying something in a in a simpler way, um, just say you know, <laughs> it, it is the win. You know, and so. I think, you know, this time around, we're actually in, the, we're turning in the manuscript for volume two here in about three weeks. So, um, so what are the odds the that that's happening? Is that happening for sure? Yes. Yeah, that is happening. Like that yeah. three, I mean, you're turning it in. I know the volume's happening. Are you actually going to be turning it in in three weeks? <laughs> oh yeah. No, no, that, well, it will <laughs> happen because, uh, 
we've we've asked for two uh, extensions on the deadline now. <laughs> I, I've, I think it I've had already old. not had. I've never before done that. that. <laughs> I've never done that before in my life. I've Can't never, had, never ever, had an extension. Ever done that. <laughs> I yeah. may or may not be turning something in a year late. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> Great. yeah, right, Ryan. I, I guess don't... if you think of poetry as you know concentrated excess, like kind of, I think that's a definition I stole definitely from someone. You know, what as simplicity, what do you mean by simplicity? Like not using too many synonyms or just shorter sentences, or is it all of the above? Yeah, I think it's just boiling it down to to the the the, the simplest version of the idea. And I mean, I you know, look, it's like I'm a I am very much a pretender. Uh, in 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 the world of poetry, but I do love words, and I love the the lyrical quality of of this kind of writing. And so um, it's it's you know yeah you, you probably heard Aaron Sorkin talk about screenwriting and how dialogue sounded like music to him. You know when he started writing, and that's how he kind of fell in love with 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 writing dialogue. And I think it's a similar thing here, where you know the this is. Um, there's no rhyme or meter, you know, to these prayers, but there is, uh, you know, a musicality a cadence to it. And so I think it's just kind of, a lot of times it helps to read, read them out loud w- when you're writing, um, just to sort of see what the rhythm sounds like. And so, yeah, I think it's just, you can get a little too, you know, flowery for your own good at times. I know that I've done that. <laughs> you can. And, <laughs> one can. Let's just let's go. Yeah, let's go a little more neutral. One can. One can get a little too. One flowery. or one could. One could. <laughs> one could. If one were not one as could. excellent as the as the present and, and, speakers. And you've you, you've you've you know you've said that I lean a little soapy and romantic. You know, so I have to have to watch myself. <laughs> that's yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's entirely entirely in, in uh, when we're disagreeing about something. <laughs> 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 I save that for when when I need to use an ad hominem. And we're fighting about a film, right? That's entirely yeah. for my ad hominem bag. If I'm this, this has happened, uh, <laughs> <laughs> never. Yeah. It's never happened over drinks before ever. Okay, right. I, I, I will say though, do you think it's fair that you're a little more of a romantic than I am? Uh, that's that's possible. That's possible. <laughs> I definitely yes. have killed more dogs. This is true in my in my fiction. So maybe <laughs> I am in my own way a little soapy and romantic when it comes to. I'll a, have you know, a, we had a dog. Uh, the no dogs were killed uh, during the production of Surprise by Oxford, but we did have a dog that we cut out of the film recently, so we kind of killed that dog. Oh, oh wow! Oh, how could you? I don't I know. I, I can't don't know stand if he's the to do that. <laughs> he's not the romantic for us. <laughs> yeah. So let's. Uh, do you mind talking a little bit about Surprise by Oxford as well? Yeah, no, not at all. So talk about the uh, the source material for that and how that happened. Yeah. So uh, about five years ago, my sister uh, told me that I needed to read a book called Surprise by Oxford. It's a memoir about um, a young woman named Carolyn Drake, who uh, won a scholarship to the University of Oxford uh, for postgrad studies. And it was the story of her kind of entering this new world of Oxford and meeting a charming young man who ended up sort of challenging all of her preconceived notions of faith. And she discovered C.S. Lewis and the Inklings and went on this journey of faith and romance and discovery. And I just fell in love with the story. It was like so many of my favorite things packed into one. All in one. Mm. And yeah. if it weren't for the COVIDs, I totally would have just crashed his set in Oxford. I would I would have gone uninvited. Well, you would have been invited. I, um, I wouldn't have even yeah. asked. I would have just, would have just <laughs> showed up. Yeah. You would have been welcome. <laughs> Yeah, so that was uh, it. Was five years ago. You know, these these things take time, unfortunately. But um, optioned the book and uh, wrote the script. And uh, last year, in the spring of last year, uh, my friend Ken Carpenter came on board to produce the film, and we raised the money and shot the film. Uh, actually, just wrapped principal photography at the end of January. We shot in the UK at the end of last year took a break for the holidays and, um, and then did another week of production here in Tennessee. Uh, so we are officially wrapped on principal photography and in post-production now. Wow. Congrats. It really is pretty awesome. And that's this whole yeah. the theme of this episode is classically educated kid makes good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're take, trying to get to. Might take a minute, but you know, John, you yeah. John Buck fan makes good. Yeah, there the, we go. 
So the other thing I wanted to ask you, I wanted to make sure this is, you can feel free to just say pass if you don't want to talk about it, but do you have a favorite Psalm in the first 75 that really is, is sort of a, a go-to or that you find yourself thinking about or contemplating more than the others, yeah. especially now that you've worked on them? That's, uh, you, you mean original Psalm or the prayer in the, in the book? What do you? Well, I would assume it'd be kind of one and the same, meaning that you would, once you've done this kind of work you'd have your mind kind of drifting, you know, to 23 mm. or to 22 or somewhere. Yeah. Where does it go? Where do you, where do you find yourself? If you're driving, if you're in traffic, where do you find your mind drifting? It's gotta be Psalm two, right? Really angry in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> really angry. Yes. <laughs> yes. Our Psalm two is quite intense. That's a great question. I'm literally flipping through the book right now, trying to think, I guess that, that means that it hasn't been uh, coming to mind while I've been in traffic. So you, but. Yeah, you don't have a groove just carved as like, this is your go-to. You don't have one defeating the others as uh, having kind of marked its place in your mind. I don't know. I think there's, uh, there's moments that I really love uh, throughout. But I think in, in the writing, the, the times when, you know, the, the, the ones I ended up really feeling close to were when you could get really creative with the, with the, uh, interpretation. And I think, uh, you know, I like Psalm 46 a lot, which, which in yeah. our book, uh, is, is called the one safe place. That's what the name of that prayer is. I found one of the things that was interesting was that when we were writing these, we just kept coming back to the theme of new creation a lot. And that, that became an overarching theme. And then, you know, you talked about the, the idea of just that, that there's, uh, this um that it's all kind of seen through the lens of christ high christology all of that um and that became really fun and that's really the only way you can see it i think on on this side of you know the new covenant so yeah trying to unsee christ going back to the psalms would be impossible yeah exactly and then and then one of the things we hadn't really planned on was to have all of these scripture references in the in the text and that that became sort of an unexpected, um, you know, pleasure to go through and try to figure out, okay, where, where, where can we draw from? And so I don't remember how many there are, there are, but there are hundreds of uh, footnotes with uh, scripture. Yeah, reference. I, I'm looking at Psalm one and you guys, I think have seven different references. Uh, basically you're doing what the apostles and Jesus did when they allowed the Psalms to speak into their own lives. Like you're basically integrating scripture with scripture. So yeah. I, I thought that element was fun too, um, to see verses that I knew pop up in the midst of Psalm 1, for instance. Yeah. Yeah, like your example at the end of Psalm 1, you refer to the wicked as they refuse your wedding garments, choosing nakedness over grace. And you're grabbing, you know, you're grabbing what in Psalm 1's a, a, an agricultural metaphor, but you're applying it to a feast. It just fit, it fits. Right. Yeah. Uh, on one level, you can say, hey, why, you know, what's the point of a free verse rendering of the Psalms? And I like that at the very beginning, you started with a C.S. Lewis quote, and you said that cranks, misfits, and malcontents praise least. And that, that alone is a great, <laughs> is a great. <laughs> and you could just close the book, right? You could there close the like, book, be like, you yeah, you know, I don't need to explain <laughs> it anymore. <laughs> Step uh, off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to praise more. Are you a crank miscontent and a uh, misfit? <laughs> it is there. It's funny how there are so many ways in which modern Christians would benefit if they would just read wiser, older authors. If they would actually just read Lewis, if they would actually just read, read people who said things that were intelligent and, and observant and pious and were just such a kind of rotten, rotten out generation. But just you crank it further back if they would actually just read the Psalms, just read scripture. If they would actually just go <laughs> yeah. further back than that and actually get to know God, get to know his word, it'd be phenomenal. I remember, I think it was, I remember it was the year 2000 because Y2K was the whole thing. When at church, we first started singing a few Psalms. And before that, we had some Psalm, Psalm renderings, like, you know, different verses pulled and choruses and things like that. But where we actually had, some psalms actually where we sang the psalm and we and usually it's a block a section you know be like a third of the psalm or you could you could sing the next third the next week or something but we sang 
the psalm. And I remember my father kind of giving us an exhortation saying, just so you know, like you'll be very uncomfortable. Like these, yeah. these will make you very, very uncomfortable <laughs> because there's an intensity of emotion and intensity of passion and a reference to narrative and context that most modern Americans and especially modern American Christians are not familiar with or comfortable with. The concept of enemies, the concept of triumph, the concept of true brokenness and repentance, like actual, like thorough repentance, the degree to which David cries out to be sheltered by God, like the, the degree to which he like begs God for deliverance and protection. Uh, there is an absolute difference, just a wide it's gulf. Desperation. Yeah. yeah. And there's a wide gulf between the way the psalmist relates to God and the way modern evangelicals relate. You know, it's just so shallow. And the psalms will rip the bottom out of your swimming pool. They really will. <laughs> like, yeah. just, like, it's just. Absolutely. I mean, we talk about that in the introduction a little bit, but, yeah. you know. One of you know another huge challenge I think in in the writing of this was some of those really difficult passages where you're trying to kind of contextualize that. Um, how do you <laughs> how do you do that? Right, you know today yep. was really a, a bit a challenge. And the fact one of the things that we were promised it was kind of weird is that if we start singing psalms, if we start reading psalms, if you start praying psalms, you will be changed. Like, it's not like you don't need to accommodate them to you. You can expect you to be accommodated to them. You can expect to be changed by the word of God and you can be, you can just expect that. And mm -hmm. so going to the word of God and actually reading it and meditating on it, contemplating it, spending time with it and letting it work on you is incredibly important and valuable. That's yeah. The Psalms are it's transformative. It yeah, really is. Yeah. After we've spent time learning them, that's what we sing to the kids at night when they wake up scared. Like it's like, Hey, K, hey, we're hitting to the song. Yeah. Books. Um, oh or, yeah. No, I sang, I sang 22 to my kids every night going to bed. You know, it's like, and it's this like about the crucifixion, you know, it's a, about being, you know, just surrounded by the bulls of Bashan and you know, all this mm -hmm. horror. And that was like, this is their lullaby. Yeah. You know, it's like, and that's, uh, that, that was forever. And when they were all little, we had this very Peter Pan nursery stretch of our lives where all five kids were in bunk beds in one big attic. And that was like the bedtime, yep. the bedtime song. Of course, there were also songs about pirates and other things, but like. That was, a, I remember that was a really difficult one to write, you know, because yeah. it's like, you know, we're trying to, I mean, we're writing these prayers for you know, personal devotion. Right. And it's, how do I, how do you write something that's sort of, it, it's, it's about me. It's a prayer that I could actually pray. Yeah. But also something that's about Christ and yep. his suffering. That's a, it's a very difficult thing yeah. to do. Um, yeah, no doubt. Uh, are you going to sing that for us here live? Uh, you know, I might, show? I might hit the button um, and, <laughs> and kill, the, kill the record. You're from a musical family, Ryan. We don't sing in front of you. I could say I'm not. I actually, I've got musicians in my family. I just, I'm just not one of them. I'll That's go, okay. I'll go sing in a closet later. But it is, it is really interesting the work the Psalms will do on you. And this is, yeah. uh, I think it's an important book. It's a beautiful little book, inside and out, and in content. But it's also an important one. Where is the best place for people to buy this? Well, it should be anywhere books are sold. But where, but where do you want them to buy it? Because sometimes people well, care. You can go to praywiththesalms.com. Okay. Start there. Praywiththesalms.com. Uh, praywiththesalms.com, but it's on, um, you know, Amazon and at Barnes and & Noble and okay. uh, where else. So. It's a great little book. I <laughs> would encourage everybody to grab a copy and spend some time with it. Um, and also spend some time, please, in the originals. Like, Absolutely. Use, use this to use this to look at the originals and to wander back through the originals and to maybe see some things that you did not see or that you've forgotten about or things that you grew calluses. Like you, you've been through them enough times that you are over familiar, and this is kind of a new a new way to see it. It can uh, it can be really helpful. So I really would encourage everybody to grab a, grab a copy of this, not just because Ryan's my friend. And not just because he's a classically educated kid made good, 
Although he is. <laughs> Not just because he's a hopeless romantic, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't kill dogs, yeah. <laughs> but does cut them from films. Yeah. That does sometimes happen. Yes. yes. Ryan, awesome. thank you so very much. It's great chatting with you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Are there, is there any other parting thoughts you want to you want to hit everybody with? Anything that you want to leave them with? Well, I, mean, I would just say, why stop at a copy when you could order a box? Yeah, so. okay. There we go. That's Can they do that at PrayWithTheSalms.com? Is that where they get a box? A crate? Uh, yeah, a shipping crate. container. Can is there I, is there like a you know <laughs> add add to cart a <laughs> shipping container? Can I ask yes. Ryan one random question off uh, based on this? Please. Did you did you? I noticed lots of alliteration here. It almost reminded me of Beowulf in parts. Uh, for example, your word, my mirth and meal, and I wondered how intentional. The he's Beowulf a, he's a little are. he's a Seamus Haney fan. Is he? Awesome. Are you not uh, Ryan? Am I lying? Uh, no. I, I am. I am. Um, no, I had a lot of fun with the alliteration. No, that that was that was fun. I just consider it a win to uh, get the word mirth in there. <laughs> yeah, it's a criminally underused word. So mirth. There you go. No, uh, the, the alliteration was was. Given that the word the, gay got of, ruined, we can't. You know. The word yeah, right. is, we got to rehabilitate for the next century. Mirth is is what we mirth got. is still fair. Yeah, mirth is mirth is fair game. Okay, Ryan. Well, thanks a bunch. Best John Bucket novel. Well, popular novel or just best your favorite personal fave. I, I agree that Green Mantle is fantastic. I love that whole series. Oh yeah. But I tell you, a, a, one that I think is just phenomenal is Witchwood. Oh yes, okay. I think that's towards the top of the list for me. There's my reading instructions. I think so, I've only done 39 steps. Oh, Brian, I uh, know. You, gotta, you, you need to read the rest. I mean, Brian. the rest are, are, are <laughs> okay. that's just the introduduction. The, um, the, you know, it gets better from there. Okay, good. That's, that's Great. really funny. How, how how would you feel about making a film with me called The Last Grove, based on the Grove of Ashtaroth? We have talked about this before. Yeah. How do you feel about it currently? Uh, sure. Okay. Sign me up. Done. There, there we go. It's done. <laughs> there we uh, go. It'll, it'll be at Redbox in six months. Everybody look for it. Fantastic. <laughs> so thanks a bunch, him. Ryan. Yeah, Very thanks, well thanks, done. Ryan. Way to uh, yeah. juggle so many plates. Good luck on closing the cut on, shel- on uh, well, Sheltering Mercy's launching on Surprise by Oxford. Everybody order a shipping container of sheltering mercy now the more copies you buy the holier you are yeah this is true that's how it works there we go that's soul food there we go that's it for this week hi it's brian cole here wanting to let you know how you can support the stories our soul food podcast you can do that by checking out canon plus there's a lot of good stuff on canon plus but i wanted to highlight for you today the nd wilson page you can find his audiobooks, Death by Living, Notes from the tilt whirl his videos on stuff like how to read the story you're in, Strong Sons, Secure Daughters, The World is Rated R, and of course, his theme statement of Chestertonian Calvinism. And if you get tired of N.D. Wilson, you can hang out in the kids section on Canon Plus, which is what my family does. Listening to Brave Ollie Possum, True Stories from Trial and Triumph, lots of good stuff in there. Right now, I'm listening to Monsters from the Id, about how the Enlightenment led to the horror genre, but occasionally it gets to be a bit dark, so I'll use a palate cleanser and watch a man rampant video or listen to a parenting book. If that sounds like something you're interested in, head over to mycanonplus.com or the App Store on Apple or Android. You can get a monthly subscription to check it out, or you can get a yearly subscription for the cheapest amount. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the SASF podcast. We'll hopefully be seeing you at mycanonplus.com.